What's up everybody, it's that white boy from the yard and I'm back at it again with another video. Today we are back with another enhanced question series with Dr. Tony Huge where him and I will be answering questions followers be sending me in on my Instagram. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to drop me a DM or drop them in the comment section and me and Tony will discuss them very soon. Okay, so today's question is... Would it be a good idea to use the injectable form of YK11, which is fully tonic, uh, to bridge in between steroid cycles? And would a dosage of two milliliters be good or bad? Fully tonic for bridging? Well, I'm gonna answer with what I know for sure. And then I'm gonna answer with some speculation and make some hypothesis. So what I know for sure is that fully tonic works through a different growth pathway than most anabolics, than most steroids or SARMs that activate the androgen receptor. See, folotonic works through the myostatin growth pathway. I mean, yes, it may have some uh, anabolic androgen receptor benefits as well, but that's not its primary mechanism of action. So when we're looking at the anabolic matrix and, and we have different, which is the theory that I designed about the different growth pathways and how to use them in synergy when using bodybuilding chemistry, uh, we've got the androgen receptor activators like gear and SARMs, and then insulin, growth hormone, inflammation, and, and we have myostatin. So if we want to come off a cycle, we want to bridge between cycles, maintain our gains, and use growth pathways other than the androgen receptor so that we can let our androgen receptors rest or let our natural testosterone come back or do some kind of cleanse, then it makes sense to start focusing during that uh, interim period between the next before the next cycle on the other growth pathways so that we can still grow even though we're giving our androgen receptors a break what's also interesting about folotonic is that we hypothesize see what I said for sure is that we know it works through a different growth, growth pathway now I'm gonna say well we hypothesize I hypothesize that it acts as an antagonist, as a, as a null, almost like a CIRM, like a selective estrogen receptor modulator that attaches the receptor and almost blocks the androgen receptor, or at least doesn't have the anabolic effect through the normal androgen pathway. What does all that mean? It means that it may resensitize the androgen receptor. It may be a tool that we have between cycles to make our next cycle even more effective or shorten the amount of time that we need between cycles to resensitize our androgen receptor. Now, all of that is theory because there's a big question on whether you even need to resensitize the androgen receptor in the first place or whether we just need to bring myostatin and other limiting growth pathways down in between cycles. But the bottom line is people are using the folotonic in between cycles and not noticing any of the side effects of anabolics or SARMs in between and are still making growth, which is, which is interesting because usually between cycles we're not trying to grow. But with folotonic, even if we're only using folotonic, we're noticing a lot of muscle growth. So how do I put all this into action for myself? Well, I do really short cycles. I don't come off for long periods of time. But if I'm gonna take, let's say, like four days off, I know that sounds like a really short period of time because I, uh, but that's because I use very fast acting compounds. So if I come off something, it's actually out of my system very quickly. If I give myself a short break, I use folotonic in between to resensitize my androgen receptors and use the myostatin growth pathway, get the myostatin down, which has a long lasting effect. Keeping the myostatin down doesn't just benefit me on the day that I'm reducing the myostatin, a day that I'm using the supplement to reduce the myostatin, it also reduces the myostatin or has a trickle down effect long after that. So yes, I use it to bridge between cycles, although again, my cycles are very short. I know other people who are using it during their bridge between cycles. A big unknown is how suppressive it is of natural testosterone. Now you said two ml, two cc's. I would bet at that dosage it would be suppressive. That's why if I was gonna bridge between cycles, I probably wouldn't do that much. I would probably do something like 0.2 ml or 0.3 ml per day or something like that. That way I could get my natural testosterone production back in between cycles while still making growth by reducing myostatin and resensitizing my antigen receptors. Again, part of what I said is fact and part of what I said is hypothesis and theory that we continue to test at Tony Huge Labs.
thanks again Tony for answering these questions and we will talk very soon if you guys have any questions please go to my Instagram we'll drop something in the comment section and me and Tony will discuss them very soon so please don't forget to subscribe go to anabolic TV and subscribe there as well and that was it guys let's get massive together